It's the Rise and Shine Talk Show with Lady C, where we uplift, educate, and motivate. Let's talk about life and faith, ministry, community, and so much more. I am Lady C, your host. Family, be sure to follow, like, and share Rise and Shine with Lady C on Facebook and Instagram. And the Rise and Shine Talk Show with Lady C is available on podcast. Thank you for joining me every week right here at 1580thepraise.com. This episode is dedicated to the beautiful Seafriel Benson, and this is dedicated to every survivor who has survived every obstacle in life. Family, today's conversation and content is about sexual abuse and may be emotionally challenging and triggering. My purpose is for hope and healing and greater awareness to protect our babies. Be sure to listen to this privately and make sure your children's ears are protected due to this adult and sensitive conversation. Today's episode is part two of The Master's Peace and be sure to listen to part one. Again, the purpose is for hope and healing and to bring awareness to the body of Christ. Many of us are suffering in silence in the pews from traumatic experiences that we have never shared. Uh, There is an untold story. Today, we have the anointed Pastor Sylvia Benson to talk about her life and her memoir, The Master's Peace. Be sure to get your copy. It is my utmost honor and pleasure to introduce and present again the beautiful, powerful, and anointed Pastor Sylvia Benson. Welcome, Pastor Sylvia, to part two. Thank you so much, yes, beautiful. Thank of you. Of the Master's Peace. For those who have not listened to part one, we are uh, just a recap, and Pastor Sylvia Benson has given, granted me position, um, permission to recap uh, what we were talking about in episode one. We're talking about the abuse, um, the child sexual abuse that Pastor Sylvia Benson endured um, at the hands of her father. Um, Pastor Sylvia endured uh, domestic violence, um, you know, sexual abuse from her biological father. Uh, She um, ended up having to have an abortion um, and she was married to her father for seven years. So Pastor Sylvia has um, experienced a lot and um, you are at the place where you can minister and help women and men who have been up at a experience something that um, many others may not have so um, according to the rain network one in nine girls and one in 53 boys under the age of 18 experience sexual abuse at the hands of an adult. Again, perpetrators of child sexual abuse are often related to the victim. Mm -hmm. And Pastor Sylvia, I want to say again, thank you for granting me permission um, and liberty uh, to ask questions because we want to help somebody else. My yes, God. Yes, ma'am. It is my pleasure. Yes. Yes. You know, Pastor Sylvia, what gave you the courage? Because, you know, many times um, people will have experienced things and they never share or tell anybody. They take it to the grave. What was your purpose in sharing? Well, actually, uh, although I just, uh, the book just came out, but I had started writing the book. Uh, it took me about eight years to write the book. But in the meantime, uh, when me and uh, my then husband w- had started pastoring and ministering, uh, different ones were having issues that really brought out me being transparent to help mm, others. That's good. So uh, that's really what uh, brought it forth because it has been a great tool mm-hmm. for me to minister to women, yeah. for them to be confident, to have that trust factor yes. that if wow, she's told this stuff and everybody has their story. Uh, but a lot of people have felt like, wow, uh, that they would never told it, Mm -hmm. which that was not my original plan either. But God had other plans that you can take your misery and turn it into a masterpiece. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so therefore, uh, uh, that's really what provoked me because I've been using it as a tool to help minister to women uh, throughout ministry. That's good. That's good, Pastor Sylvia. While reading this well-written book, it was very clear that you had a solid spiritual foundation 
and relationship with Christ, even as a child. And that while being abused as a child, you knew that your father was wrong, but yet you continue to pray for him. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Because one thing I didn't mention was that he was also a bishop. Mm. My uh, God. In church. So he was a bishop in the church as well as a clubber by night. My God. And so therefore, uh, he was a bishop as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, Will preach the gospel. Jesus. Jesus. So, Pastor Sylvia, your father was a bishop Mm -hmm. with two wives, several wives, who preached in the morning and was in the nightclub at night. Did you ever consider, hear me, did you ever consider walking away from God and the church? Um, let's see. It's a complex question. Uh, I stayed in church because, of course, we still had to go to church, although we clubbed as well. Mm-hmm. It was a must that you went to church. It was mm-hmm. not a question. Uh, but I did stop praying for myself mm. because I felt like since I was in such a damnable okay. uh, relationship that God was not going to forgive me. Wow. wow. So as I continued to pray for others, mm-hmm. I quit praying for myself because wow. I didn't feel worthy. So I just, you know, omitted me praying for myself, mm-hmm. for deliverance for me, for protection for me but constantly pray to God for other people. Mm -hmm. My God. Pastor Sylvia, many adults still long for the emotional, solid, and healthy relationship with a parent. Unfortunately, the parent is not, they're just, they don't have it. They're not able to love from that pure and sweet place. Can you encourage that person um, who is listening and they still long for that mommy and daddy relationship? Uh, Well, definitely. It's not wrong to long for it. I believe it's human nature that God puts us in. The Bible says that no man's an island and that every joint supplies. And so he placed it there for us to be able to get the supply that we need. You know, just like the body needs everything that we have. Everything has a function. And so I would just encourage those who feel like they lost out, that they missed out, First of all, uh, you know, forgive yourself and then ask God to forgive you and God will heal you and lead you and he will bring people into your life that can help assist and supply what you feel like you've been missing. Mm-hmm. That's good. Uh, and the community is so important, uh, uh, people to love and, and, and that's a major tool that uh, uh, the love of Christ is major to look beyond the fault to see the needs. And that's what it's really taught me throughout uh, this journey is to love people where they are. That's good. Because you don't know what people have endured. And so dealing with some of the things that still attached to them, uh, uh, God's love is so powerful that he can deliver through you. Mm. He can deliver through me Mm -hmm. to help people to walk in total wholeness and freedom. Hallelujah. Yes. So, Pastor Sylvia, I have another complex question for you. Mm-hmm. How does a custodial or residential parent handle visits with an emotionally unstable or abusive parent, but the child is adamant about having a relationship with a parent that is harmful and that child will fight you tooth and nail to be in a relationship and in some instances the parent doesn't even want to be in relationship with the child so how do we as parents and grandparents handle this very sensitive challenging issue well yeah that is (laughs) Um, (laughs) yes yes situation is different and so first of all I would say you pray and ask God because Eat in no situation is the same. Yes. Uh, uh, and so first you would definitely have to ask God for wisdom and knowledge in every situation and then go from that because to give a, a one fit all does not. Yeah. Uh, but praying and asking God for guidance 
uh, he will instruct you as to what to do. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the best <laughs> offer I can give because it's not a one-off. No, it's not. It's really no, not. it's not. And, you know, and the thing is, Pastor Sylvia, just like you experienced as a child, a young child, every child wants to be with their parent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They want that love. And there are just a lot of things that, you know, sometimes um, children just don't understand. They just don't yeah. understand. But you are right. Absolutely. We have to pray. We have to pray. We have to pray. And I yeah. would even encourage um, for those who are listening, if someone is endure- um, experiencing that, have supervised visits. Yeah. <laughs> go Absolutely. go to That's, the courthouse, yeah. put it on yeah. paper, put it, you know, yeah. put it in black and white and have supervised supervise visits to ensure Absolutely. the safety um, of our babies. Yeah. So Pastor Sylvia, can you talk with me once you um, escaped? Um, how did you, uh, first of all, let, let me back up. Talk about the escape. How did that happen and who helped you with that, <laughs> uh, with that, uh, with, with that escape? Okay. Well, once I made up my mind, uh, that I was sick and tired. Mm. And it's, it's, it's crazy because uh, by then I was uh, 21. Okay. Uh, so, but once I made up my mind, okay, I do not want to live like this anymore. Because mm-hmm. it's one thing to wish it and hope it. It was many times throughout the time that I was sick and tired, but I hadn't really made up my mind totally. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you know, you think it's made up for a minute, then you switch back, and then you go through what are people going to say, you go through all those things, mm-hmm. because, of course, it was threats that if I ever told, mm-hmm. it was, you know, and all that stuff. But once I made up my mind, I told my mom, I said, Mom, I'm ready to come home. Wow. And I only did that one time. Uh, I never was a fan of uh, the Mari Povich show in terms of, <laughs> You know, you get on there mm-hmm. and you express all that's wrong in the house and then you go back home to it. <laughs> I never was a fan of that. Right, I right, that right. They, they do that all the time on that show. <laughs> I, I it get it. Crazy. <laughs> and so, so once I told my mom, that was the one and only time that saying I was ready to come home, she had told me, she said, but Sylvia, the Lord said, pay your tithes and he's going it's going to open the way for you to get home. Mm. And so, although I worked, I had to steal money. Uh, uh, I worked, but I had to give all, we had to give all of our money to him. So, because he was an alcoholic as well, oh I would wait till he was asleep mm-hmm. and dig in his pockets. And so whatever money I could get out real quick without him catching me, okay. uh, I got that, I think it was about $10 in uh, I was I did work, and so where I was working across the street, it was a, a drugstore, mm-hmm. and so I ran over there, got the envelope and the stamps, and by the time I got all that out of ten dollars, I think I might have had a dollar to send for type. Mm. Uh, after I spent to get everything, mm-hmm. and then one of his uh, girlfriends, ex girlfriends, uh, she. She, one of the reasons why she left him because she noticed that something was not right. Oh. And she was like, mm-mm. So, uh, but we kept in contact and she gave me her number. She said, anytime you're ready to get out of here, you wow. let me know. Wow. And so I kept her number. And when I told her I was ready, we made plans. And uh, the uh, my father, because we, we clubbed every night, so... Uh, Every other night, it was one wife stay home, watch the kids, the other wife uh, go out with him. And so this was a routine uh, the whole time I was there. So when it was my time to babysit, Mm -hmm. uh, I had to trust God because all the babies were under seven years old. Wow. Uh, It was three babies at the time. And uh, I had to trust God, mm-hmm. you know, I was like, God, I, I wanted to take the kids, but I knew I would be got for kidnapping. Right, right. Uh, uh, and so it was a lot of mental things that happened throughout that, but God assured me that he would take care of the children. And so the ex-girlfriend picked me up once my father and uh, my stepmom went out on the town 
and we immediately hit the road and she brought me halfway which mm -hmm. is marion uh, between toledo and here marion is the halfway mark she brought me halfway and then I, my aunt and uncle came from columbus and picked me up from marion and that was how i was able to come home my god my god pastor sylvia how did you adjust to life after you returned for, um, to Columbus after the escape how did you adjust to life afterwards um on the outward it looked easy but mm -hmm. inwardly I had a lot of struggles for years yeah. because the fear and torment mm -hmm. that was instilled in me through the manipulation mm -hmm. and through what all had transpired uh, I was always warned he would come and kill me and what have mm -hmm. you and I had near death experiences while I was there I tell uh, one major one in the book yes. about when he created the sawed-off shotgun mm -hmm. and pulled the trigger three times and uh, the last time the bullet came out and skipped my forehead and went to the couch. So he was a very mm -hmm. dangerous, very my dangerous God. man. And so therefore, mentally, I would have, would have nightmares for years mm. and years after that. Uh, uh, if I heard he was in town, mm -hmm. I would literally lock myself in the house and c close the curtains so that he couldn't find me. Uh, it was a lot of mental things that I did go through. Yeah. But thank God with the help of God and with the help of my then husband, I'm no longer married now, but at that time, God used my husband at that time in a great way mm -hmm. uh, to help me yes. to uh, overcome the obstacles that I was going through yes, uh, yes. with that traumatic experience. Mm, 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 mm. So Pastor Benson, as I, you know, I, I read this book cover to cover my, my book is tattered. I mean, it, it was just, so, <laughs> it's tattered. <laughs> Pastor Wink, <laughs> the spine. <laughs> Listen, I took this book to Mexico. <laughs> wow. Every, <laughs> Bishop Crump was like, what are you reading? What are you doing over there? <laughs> wow. Yes, this is how powerful. So my question is regarding your father, did he change his lifestyle? Did your father ever apologize to you? Um, for changing his lifestyle, he said he did. Of course, I'm not an eyewitness to it, so I can only go for what he said. He is still living, by the way. Um, and uh, what was the second part of the question, sweetie? Yeah, um, did he ever apologize? Oh, yes, he did apologize. He did. Yes, he did apologize. So how did that happen, yes. Pastor Sylvia, if you don't mind sharing? Um, it was years later, and of course, I said, I have family on my father's side up here in Columbus, too, in churches and so mm -hmm. he came down for a anniversary or something and we were I was invited to come and sing as well and uh but during this particular time his brother had, had his brother had passed and I came to the funeral which was my uncle and on stage before we sang they asked us to sing together oh, and wow. <laughs> And so before we sang, he embraced me on the stage. He moved the mic and he apologized in my ear before we sang. <laughs> That's how he wow. apologized. Oh, my yes. goodness. Oh, my goodness. So <laughs> what is the nature of the relationship now with your father? Um, We have spoken uh, off and on. We were building. A, a, I was wanting to build a new relationship with him and we were doing well until I told him that I wrote the book and once he found out what the book was about um, he went back into the verbal really? uh, verbal uh, and I said oh I knew that I didn't have to listen to that okay. so I just cut it off the, uh, 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 wow. I cut the connection off so that I wouldn't have to hear that you know, experience uh, that so verbal he abuse to, again. Yeah, he had begun telling other family members because they found out about it when they read the book, and they approached him about it. Oh, and I'm sure they did. Found out. <laughs> that was how he found out what the book was about. Because although I told him I was writing the book, 
I was waiting for him to ask me what it was about, and he never did. He said, I'm so proud of you. Congratulations. I'm excited to read it. But he didn't know what it was about. <laughs> but then... <laughs> Uh, when my family, uh, when my family on his side, his brother and nephews and stuff reached out to him, and and he had reached out to them and told them, "Tell me what the book is about after you read it." And when they told him, uh, I found out through them that he was stating that she's crazy, don't believe her, she's oh. mental, and so I didn't hear it myself. But I was like, "Okay, well, thank you so much," because I'd ask God. What, what yeah. do you want me to do? Because I still mm-hmm. wanted reconciliation. Right, Nothing right. about the love of God. You know, love of God is so powerful. Mm-hmm. And so I would be like, how could you even dare? How? But guess what? He looked beyond my fault. Yes, yes. Uh, and, and even at the worst, ugly that we've mm-hmm. done, you know, the Bible said we so much will get mercy. And, of course, everybody has this spiel of should you reconnect, should you whatever. But after all, he's still my father. I can't yeah. change that. Yeah. And I did try to connect, but like I said, once the book came out and I was hearing some of the things that were being mm-hmm. said, I just decided to cut it so that I wouldn't have that re right. back into my spirit. Absolutely. And you did right. Absolutely. Uh, Pastor Sylvia, now th- this is what I, I, you know, I'm telling you this. I, I told you I read this book cover to cover. So what happened to your stepmom, the first wife? So um, is he still married to her? Whatever happened to her? No, she's not married to him. She ended up, uh, years after I left, she ended up leaving as mm. well. And so uh, she is married to someone else now. And I have talked to her. I do keep in contact with her um, from time to time. And she supports the book. And she said, wow, she was like, wow, you're so brave to do this. She was definitely pleased as you notice I didn't name anybody else's mm-hmm. name no you didn't in the book I kept everybody's mm-hmm. identity yes. uh, private and so she was just definitely grateful for that as well as saying wow you took steps that we have not taken wow. uh, you know that she was just saying how when she read the book it, it, she said she had to take off work she said it just brought everything back to her and she was wow. very apologetic and always have been uh, and I was apologetic to her mm. as being the stepdaughter. So she's like, oh, you were a baby. So she's very supportive, yeah. very, very supportive yeah. of me. Yeah. And she said, if anybody needs any proof that this happened, she said, tell them to call me. I, I am the proof that this is a legit book. Wow. And so, yes. Oh, yes. my goodness. That, that, that was really, um, that was very mature on her end because again I want to reiterate you were a child and in essence um, she was a co-conspirator in all of this because she knew this abuse was going on and she did nothing to stop you know to stop it and and to help you wow oh my goodness she has definitely apologized several times we both apologize to each other several times. Oh, my goodness. And uh, I just thank God for the love of God. The love of God is powerful. Yes, absolutely. So, um, Pastor, um, so let's let's talk about, um, did you, were you able, did you seek professional counseling to aid in your healing process? I have not. Okay. Uh, I have not. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. I praise God that, I mean, uh, and people have asked me that a lot in some find it disgusting and I have not but uh, so far I have not God has been my counselor yeah. the word of God says he is a great counselor mm-hmm. I'm not against counseling right. but I praise God that uh, God has told me like I said at the time my husband and I was married to at that time uh, God used him greatly mm-hmm. uh, uh, to cover me yes, to counsel yes. me because uh Really and truly, uh, I didn't have a woman in my life that even wanted to touch it. Okay. Uh, they, they, they couldn't even touch it. Uh, mm-hmm. it. Whether it was trigger for them, right. whether, but it was no woman. Even my mom and then once I really told them what happened, uh-huh. all they could say was, thank God you're out. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. God really instrumentally at that time used 
uh, Thomas Benson mm, to amen. be that person that I could see yeah. that would talk me through it, counsel me through it, walk me through it. So I did not go to a paid physician, mm-hmm. but God did use Thomas Benson at the time to counsel me and help me uh, and amen. pray me through. Amen. And so I praise God for that. Amen. Amen. Oh, my goodness. I tell you. <laughs> Pastor Sylvia, God <laughs> is good. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. So as we're wrapping up, um, I want you to talk to us about forgiveness um, and healing. Um, and again, I want to reiterate mm-hmm. family that's listening. During this time, Pastor Sylvia Benson was a minor. She was a child. And we have the expectation that our parents will protect us and love us. Mm-hmm. Can you talk to us? How did you get to a place of forgiveness and healing? If um, as we wrap up in about a minute, forgiveness, reconciliation, and healing, and how you moved forward. Again, uh, I hate to be repetitive, but of course, God used Thomas Benson uh, to help yeah. greatly as a human being, Amen. Uh, and and in went the way because God revealed to him. While we were dating, I never planned to tell anybody because I was told that if I ever told anybody that he would kill me. Jesus. And so I had planned to put that secret to my mm-hmm. grave. God revealed it to Thomas Benson when uh, we were dating. And uh, he said, uh, God showed me something in the dream. And so I sarcastically said, okay, Mr. Prophet, go ahead and talk. <laughs> And I did not realize that that's what he was. Wow. wow. <laughs> but, and so when he revealed it, uh, I like to wreck his uh, Oldsmobile at the time. But uh, moving to the forgiveness, when he was able to, once God revealed it to him, I was saying, okay, you don't have to be with me. Don't worry about it. My mm-hmm. secret is out. I'm gross. Okay, you're not wanting it deal with me because that's what I was always told that nobody would mm. want me if I ever told this Jesus. that nobody would love me mm. nobody would ever want me that I would be a freak of nature and nobody would have anything to do with me so when uh, Thomas Benson forgave me and still stayed that was a great part mm. of showing me yeah. what forgiveness looks like that he didn't hold it against me uh, and then as uh, it took me years to forgive myself. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. And so through the love of God and me applying the word of God, and I mean, really, you know, uh, unfortunately, you hear a lot of people in church now saying that just Jesus is not enough. But for mm-hmm. me, he's been enough. Amen. Uh, I, I, I just, I'm sorry. That's Amen. my testimony. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, that, that, that applying his word, uh, we all have heard that, Forgiveness is not fun. I forgave myself, not just of that, but just all the things that I know that I was regretful of doing uh, because I'm one that tend to keep stuff and, and I keep the blame while I set everybody else free, but I was not free. Amen. And so uh, a forgiveness is for us. Uh, because now it seems even in the church world that even although the scripture says if you don't forgive, God won't forgive you, we we don't care about that. <laughs> we care about how painful it is, but the unforgiveness becomes more painful than the event itself. Amen. Amen. Pastor Sylvia, we have run out of time. Thanks. <laughs> you have to get this book. Thank you, Pastor <laughs> Sylvia Benson. Thank you. If you are in need of support, please contact the National Sexual Assault Helpline, 1 800 656. Hope I'm your host, Lady C. Remember, with God, all things are possible. You have purpose, and it's time to rise and shine. Join me weekly here on 1580thepraise.com. <laughs>